you? Where are you going to be on the, the TV? I'm watching everything. When am I going to be on television? You watch all the time and I'm not on? <laughs> Try Channel 2. <laughs> We're going, this coming Saturday, we, we come back. Oh, I know, I know, don't tell me. I, I got to recognize your face. Yeah, you know who you are? <laughs> Don't tell me. I know you're Martin D. D Martin. I know you for crying out loud. I see on the television there. He said all the time when I have it on, when you're on. Hey, you know something? Sergeant Mullins. What? Do you have to hold me so tight? <laughs> I'm not crazy about this job either. Yeah. But we have to act like we're a couple on a date, so we have to pretend, all right? Right. As long as you keep it on that basis. <laughs> what makes you think it could be anything else? Well. <laughs> it seems unfair that all the variety shows that have come and gone before Saturday Night Live don't receive the modern recognition that they deserve. The experienced television watcher knows all about Ed Sullivan, but the majority of network variety shows that were staples of the 50s and early 60s are unfortunately lost either entirely or partially. The Carol Burnett Show is a special exception. Having survived in syndication in different forms throughout the decades, Carol Burnett has remained a consistent presence on the silver screen for all viewers throughout the ages. Sadly, after 11 seasons on the same network, only one of the show's cast members saw lasting success in another television project, based on a recurring sketch from the long-running variety show. Resuscitation. It's the only way. Hey. <laughs> Alrighty. Can't just jump into something like this. Don't jump in. I don't really know you. Huh? Despite dropping from 29th to 44th place in Nielsen ratings in its 10th year, CBS renewed Burnett's show for an 11th season. After a decade of working with Carol and winning several Emmy Awards, Harvey Corman had been offered a contract by ABC to headline his own series. With Barry Van Dyke and Christine Leahy co-starring, the Harvey Corman show aired from January 31st to August 3rd of 1978. After airing six episodes, the Harvey Corman show was canceled. Oh boy, fruit and fiber. No, it's new fruit and fruit and fiber. Beg your pardon? Mm -hmm. Well, you see, they added 25% more dates, raisins, and wallets to the dates, raisins, and wallets. So now it's the great tasting fruit and fruit and fiber. Just because they added more dates, raisins, and wallets doesn't change the name. It's still fruit and fiber. No, 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 no. Matter of fact, it's so delicious, they should call it fruit and fruit and fruit and fruit and fiber. Dick Van Dyke. Fresh from headlining his own short-lived Emmy-winning variety series, Van Dyke and Company, was brought in to replace Corman. However, his presence did not help save the sagging ratings, as the show faced new competition in ABC's The Love Boat. After three months, Van Dyke departed the show, and CBS, in a desperate attempt to save the series, moved the Carol Burnett show from Saturdays to Sundays at 10 p.m. In between... In between a few TV movies, Harvey Corman appeared on The Tim Conway Show, the first two seasons of Mama's Family, and multiple episodes of The Love Boat, with two appearances in seasons 6 and 7. It would be 1986 before CBS would give Harvey another lead on the sitcom Leo and Liz in Beverly Hills, created by Steve Martin and Carl Gottlieb. This short-lived sitcom was also canceled after only six episodes. Three years later, alongside Cloris Leachman, Harvey starred in NBC's The Nut House, airing on September 20th, 1989. It too was canceled after producing 10 episodes, but only airing six. I'm just an old man. Well, that's all right. I better dash back to the kitchen. Harvey Corman closed his career for a variety of guest appearances, appearing in the 10th episode of the Golden Girls spinoff, The Golden Palace, on November 20th, 1992, 
1995, he appeared on the 11th episode of the second season of the CBS reboot Burke's Law on the episode Who Killed the King of the Country Club. He appeared on the seventh episode of the last season of Ellen in 1996, followed by a fourth season appearance on Diagnosis Murder the following year. He would have two more appearances in 1997, one on the seventh episode of the HBO spinoff Perversions of Science, and then on the ninth episode of the second season of Suddenly Susan. Harvey Corman's final live-action television appearance was in 1998 on the sixth episode of the fifth season of ER. I'd like you to meet the fella I picked out who's going to be our regular announcer, Lyle Wagoner. Would you yes, Carol? It's just wonderful that you're going to be with us, Lyle. We're very thrilled to have someone like you with such a beautiful voice. <laughs> it's a, it's a, I, th I think it's going, oh, God. <laughs> Prior to The Carol Burnett Show, Lyle Wagner had a start similar to a lot of the heartthrobs of the late 50s and early 60s, mainly being small roles in westerns and sci-fi projects. His first television appearance was on the 22nd episode of the 11th season of Gunsmoke, followed by a bit role on the 11th episode of the last season of Lost in Space. His last guest role was an appearance on the 23rd episode of the 4th season of Marcus Welby, M.D., before a 7th season stint on The Carol Burnett Show. Rules, this pageant is no different than any other beauty pageant. Excuse me. Smile. Brace yourself. Hiya, baby. <laughs> After the Carol Burnett show, Lyle Wagner would go on to his arguably most well-known role, Colonel Steve Trevor on the ABC hit Wonder Woman. After only 59 episodes, however, Lyle found himself again guest starring, appearing on the fourth season of Maude. Women can't possibly compete with men in contact sports uh, uh, simply because of the male physical superiority. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> Do you care to prove it? Afterward, Lyle was in three different TV shows that only went for one season, appearing on the last episode of Flying High, the seventh episode of Super Train, and the second episode of Time Express. From this, he would go on to appear on more well-known shows, like a fifth season appearance in Charlie's Angels, and a third season appearance on Mork and Mindy. Lyle would have three recurring guest roles at the start of the 80s, between The Love Boat, Fantasy Island, and Happy Days, albeit playing different characters each time. Closing the 80s with appearances on Simon and Simon and It's a Living, Lyle Wagner had a guest role on the ninth episode of the sixth season of The Golden Girls in 1990. He would go on to appear in the tenth episode of the short-lived Daddy Dearest, alongside Don Rickles. In 1995, Lyle appeared on the second season of the Burke's Law reboot and a thirteenth episode of Sybil. The following year, he was on the fourth season of Ellen. In 1999, he was on the second season of the Forgotten Love Boat reboot, The Next Wave, followed by an appropriate season two appearance on That 70s Show. Lyle Wagner's final live-action television role was on the 10th episode of the Forgotten Fox sitcom, The War at Home. This is Jack Wilder. Well, my friends call me Wild Jack. <laughs> <laughs> The cast of The Carol Burnett Show was reunited several times throughout the decades on various television programs, specials, and half-hearted revivals. After the original run ended, material from seasons 6 through 10 was repackaged as a half-hour series known as Carol Burnett and Friends, which has aired in various syndicated outlets more or less since the original series ended. Despite having lackluster careers after the show, one thing is crystal clear. For 11 years, Harvey Corman, Tim Conway, Vicki Lawrence, and Lyle Wagner were at the top of the comedic game, occupying a benchmark place in television history. Comedy on CBS's Saturday Night. Oh, I didn't want
wanna tell ya. You did. I didn't wanna tell ya. believe that nonsense, do you? Man turning into beast? <laughs> Don't you know there's no such things as ver- I'll count to three. Ooh, one. I don't believe this. It's like watching an X-rated Sesame Street. I said, do you care to peru it? <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> there is one contact sport that women are as good at, if not better than men. And I don't mean tiddly winks. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Comes a time. We have to say so long. Oh.